Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's a girl, Jackie Ina. Jiggy, 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 jiggy. I'm always gonna be proud to say this, but today's video is gonna be done in partnership with my girl, Pat McGrath. It's been a while since I've done a full face of one brand tutorials. It's probably one of the series that does the best of my videos. You guys love to see like the strengths and weaknesses from all brands. And I feel like full face videos really highlight that. As Pat's brand has continued to grow, like now we have face products, we've got complexion, we've got a new concealer which I recently just did a first impressions review on and it's kind of a big freaking deal. In fact, the concealer is actually gonna be the highlight part of today's video. Some of these products are not gonna be Pat McGrath because even though we do kind of have like a full on brand from her, there's other things that Pat still has yet to create, which by the way, I'd love to see Pat. I need the info, you need a consultant, I got you. I'd love to see Pat, not with like a blush palette. Oh, oh. God. <sighs> That was the packed skin fetish primer, by the way. This is actually one of my favorite things from her entire skin collection. That primer feels like skincare. I don't know how, I don't know why. Why? It just smells really nice. It feels really blurring, pore filling. Ignore that. I just got extractions. I don't need judgment. What I need is for you to like this video. So as I keep going throughout the face steps, I'm gonna be sharing both pros and cons about some of the products that I love from Pat's line because as you know, some of these products are frequent favorites of mine. Just wanna give you guys quick stats, quick tea. And by the way, tonight's look, because I am going on a double date, I wanna hear this same old look with us. You never do do it. Okay, you got me. Sorry, I'm sorry. I really am just 50% Nigerian and 50% sarcasm. Okay, 49% sarcasm, 51% Nigerian. But still, nonetheless, you get what I mean. I was trying to say tonight's a date night, so I'm not really gonna go super overly creative with the makeup. I kind of want to not be a distraction from the appetizers. I'm gonna keep it cute and keep it flirty and keep it very wearable, which is kind of what I always do anyway. You guys know the drill. You already know what time it is. I like makeup to be wearable and pretty. That's just my signature. People come here for that, and if that's not what you're into, no judgment whatsoever. But I tend to stay in my lane. Look, I'm 30. Too. About to be 33 in August. Praise Jesus for SPF. You guys already know, like, if I don't like something, I'm not gonna all of a sudden change my mind now. Y'all don't come here to get Vogue. You come here to maybe get Whole Foods, Trader Joe's, you know, bowling double date night. That kind of vibe, you know, get on my back. All right, so for the foundation, I'm gonna use the Skin Fetish Sublime Perfection. I have went on record several times calling this one of the best launches of 2019. I still stand by that. The shade that I use is Medium Deep 26. Now, this is definitely not a full coverage foundation. So if you need full on like crime scene coverage, you're not gonna get it from this product. And I think that's why Pat created it. But there's just something really beautiful about the skin, the texture of my skin still showing through with this foundation, the glow, the aura, the magic. This foundation has become my daytime go-to. I love wearing this for meetings and just all day wear because it doesn't really feel super heavy, even though at this point I've worn it all and rocked it all. So I guess I could say makeup kind of just all feels the same now. That's sad. That's really sad. By the way, in case you're wondering what I was doing earlier with the powder, that was Deep Force Setting Powder from Pat McGrath. I usually do that on some of my more skin-like foundations if I want to tone down some, some, not a ton, but some of the oil in them and some of the shine. It's all the difference between being full on dewy, you know, like dewy fresh versus being like dewy but wearable. It's balance, it's all about a balance. And I usually wear about like two to three pumps ish of this foundation. I don't know how Pat did it, but it never gets cakey. I've seen her use seven pumps on one half of somebody's face one time, and I swear to you, it did not look cakey at all. Not gonna quite go there, but I will say that like, it's just, I just came to shut everybody else down and put everybody else in business. Now, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing with my chin, but I'm noticeably leaving this area kind of bare. The reason why I do that is so that I can correct with concealer that's a little bit more red. You know, so it doesn't look at that ashy look, but I will very lightly go over it just to say we evened out the complexion. Now, for that step, I usually go in with concealer. This is Pat McGrath's first ever concealer. The Skin Fetish Sublime Skin Perfector Concealer. The first shade that I'm gonna start with is MD28. It is pretty red. The reason why I'm reaching for that color 
color first is because I'm gonna cancel out some of my under eye darkness. It's a little bit lighter than my complexion, so it's also going to work as like a corrector slash highlight. So I did film a first impressions on the concealer, and I really wanna save the juicy details of the swatches and like all of that stuff for the first timers that are learning about it on that video. So I'm not gonna do swatches, I'm just gonna guide you through the concealers that I use because I got like three other colors that I'm gonna be demoing today. And I already bought one more because I felt like I was missing a color. These are designed to be full coverage. These are also designed to be buildable. The coverage is definitely more full compared to the foundation. Now, when I first heard she was launching the concealer, I thought we were going to get a doe foot applicator wand version of the Skin Fetish Foundation. And like, this is my favorite foundation. I will be very honest, but I just don't want that in a concealer, girl. Like, I just want to look like Bella Hadid to you. I'm actually really, really happy with the fact that they came in with this concealer and said, okay, you girls want coverage, we've got coverage because the Skin Fetish Foundation has a gorgeous finish, but like I can work with light to medium finishes on my face. Under eyes, not so much, I'm not interested. Covered up, covered up. I would describe the texture as really bouncy. It's gel-like and it doesn't dry down. So if you're looking for something that is gonna be super mattifying and that will, for whatever reason, I don't know, I mean, I don't understand a lot of people's motives, but maybe some of you out there might want a concealer that would highlight texture under your eyes. This won't do that at all. It does the exact opposite. It's hydrating, it's moisturizing, and it pretty much does exactly what I personally need a concealer to do. Honestly, I'm gonna go on record. It's only March. It's only March, and this is a bold claim, but I feel like this is gonna be one of the biggest concealers of the year. I'm just saying. Only because I feel like this is not what I would expect from half. It's not. So skin girls, you're gonna really like this launch because it's bomb. I definitely feel like one of the best qualities about the concealer is the fact that it blurs no matter if you use it on your face or under eye. Everything just kind of feels really blurred and smooth. So the shade of Pat's concealer that I used to highlight is the shade MD26. This is honestly the most divine, look at me talking like Pat, divine darling, mother thinks it's divine. I love Pat and I love her accent. MD26, and by the way, there is a brush. Now I'm not gonna lie, I'm not a big brush user for concealers, but I need to at least try it just to say that I tried it at least once, right? Can't knock it to try it. When I first saw this, I didn't think it was concealer brush. I was a little confused. But the shape is supposed to mimic the fingertips because you know a lot of, oh. I'm gonna shut up the end. I've actually never seen a brush apply product like that. It's literally like if you were applying this with your fingers. She's giving me pin pointed targeted application. She's giving me put it exactly where I told you to put it. And I suppose if you have clients and you want to mimic the fingertip look, because obviously I know why people apply concealer with their hands just because of the desired finish, but this is a really sanitary way to kind of mimic kind of the same look because I'm really liking how this is distributing the product on my face. When you're using a regular brush, like I'll usually use like a powder brush for this step or I'll just use the Doe Foot applicator, you get really harsh, you get really harsh lines, really harsh imprints, but when you want a more seamless and already somewhat blended application of the under eye concealer, you could just use this brush because this is exactly what that's giving you. I'm also going to spot treat the center of my chin. I always like to highlight my chin and then I'm also going to do the sunset on my forehead. Oh, that's applying that really nice. I know you said concealer, girl, but I'm getting my money's worth. I didn't pay for it, but that's the side of the Go ahead and highlight my nose as well. Now, because I am going out tonight, oh, I can bring my hair. I did contour. This was during the day. I'd probably just go in with a light bronzer just to warm up the face. But I mean, but if it just comes between you, me, and selfies, I'm gonna choose selfies. I don't know what time it is. That's Leo culture embodied in one tweet. It's not Twitter, but that's beside the point. While I blow this out, I want to read to you guys some more stats um, about the newness of the concealer. It's also designed to, it also has a Vita Serum Complex, which apparently is designed to help fight wrinkles or the formation of wrinkles, I should say. It preserves the hydrolipidic barrier of the skin. I just want to hear Pat say that in her accent. I'm going to find a clip. Actually, I'm going to send her a voice note and ask her to send me a voice note of her saying that. And this is supposed to be something that will help also boost hydration in the skin by activating the natural hyaluronic acid and ceramides in your own skin. We all know hyaluronic. If she could be my goddaughter, like she would, because I love hyaluronic acid. 
that much. Now I know there is something to be said about like ingredients like hyaluronic acid and stuff like that being in makeup products and are they really beneficial? Are they not? You know, it just depends on who you ask. But at the end of the day, like nine times out of 10, my thing is sometimes you just realize that nine times out of 10, hyaluronic acid is better than some other trash being a concealer, right? I, that's just the way I see it. The next shade that I'm gonna use to highlight a little bit more is the shade MD23. This is just a step up from the highlighting shade that I used earlier, which is MD26. This also has golden neutral undertones and it's just gonna add a little touch of brightness. Now what I like about this concealer is this is my daytime concealer and this is also now my nighttime concealer and I won't feel super subconscious or like underdressed if that's even a thing, being underdressed with your makeup. I feel like this concealer can take it there. The brush is cruelty free by the way and the wood handle is certified vegan. I just learned. I love how I've literally put on three shades and it still kind of looks like I have on one layer. Random rant by the way. One of my pet peeves is when someone says, well, if that was you, you'd be up in arms about the little There's nothing I hate more from people that don't know me invent a hypothetical situation that doesn't even apply to me. Like it's just like. Jester, you have done it again. Constantly raising the bar for the circus and doing it foolishly. I'd say I'm surprised, but I know who you are. I've seen it up close and personal. Do you, do you know me? Have we met? Because that actually would not bother me, but okay. Keep me happy. Now I'm just taking a little bit of the foundation and I'm going around the concealer just to make sure everything looks nice and blended. Now, since we're here for Auntie Pat, I'm gonna just skip right through the products that aren't Pat related because it's not really relevant to the video. The concealer is really good for cut creases. Pat directly told me this. She said, I made her specifically for cut crease shots. And I really like using this as a base because it's nice and like sticky, just because it gives that shadow something to grab onto. <laughs> yeah. Um, real quick before we get into these eyes though, all of you guys who saw my Instagram campaign, like, okay, can we just talk like girls? I recently, with Oscar Too Much Tea, opened up in an interview a little bit more. I mean, you guys know a little bit about my past, but I think I really put it out there in a way that I never really have before. During Black History Month, I got interviewed by Instagram and they put it on their Insta stories and it was really cool, really, really cool, unique feature. And I just wanted to say thank you to the incredible amount of support I got on that. I mean, I guess sometimes I really do forget about Instagram's reach, honey, because that got traction in a way that I just don't think I've ever seen in a story like that. Like it just went different level of viral. And you know, it was a really touchy, sensitive topic. And I just wanted to say thank you to everybody who handled that with care and was supportive through that because it's not easy, you know, putting yourself out there. No matter what people say, it's never easy putting yourself out there at all. And I just am super appreciative that you guys give me the privilege and honor of doing that. Like it really feels like part of what I do is serving you. And thank you for being here for me and listening to me and being like a sounding board in some some instances where like I really couldn't talk to anybody about certain things. Love you guys. So for shadows, it's absolutely no secret that I feel there is a certain tier of who creates the best shadows and who should just go out of business. Now, Pat McGrath is definitely at the top and I will definitely say out of all of her palettes, Boom, my favorite was right here, right here. Mothership 5 gave us rose gold. She gave us just these foily, dry textured, not really shimmers, not really glitters. It's almost like a finish. I don't know how you would describe this, but this is my all-time favorite palette. I always tell people that, you know, maybe on a budget, and okay, Pat McGrath is not exactly budget friendly, let's just be honest. But when people ask me, I want to splurge in a Pat palette, what's the first one I should buy? I always tell them Mothership 5 because it's the most user friendly. I love all of her palettes, but I would say the other ones are quite artistic. So you may struggle as it pertains to like creating looks that are a little bit more wearable. And I know most of you guys that watch me like wearable looks. So I dusted that one out. She also came out with these new quads and I'm kind of living for them. There's no mats in them, but I have this one here and this one is called There's a Lid. <laughs> <laughs> well, I pulled this one because I thought I kind of like where this pinky, peachy shade is going. It's like dual chrome ish. And then don't really care about Star Wars at all. I take that back. Let me not piss off Star Wars hype. But she collabed with Star Wars and this collection was low key, like calling my name, all of the gold packaging. I was just like, oh. disgusted how beautiful it was. That was a really, really insane review. Like probably one of the most beautiful collections. I don't know what it is about the movie. Why do we put so much energy in the movie collection? Remember when they did the Game of Thrones one? I was low-key here for that too. The package was crazy, but that was a good collection. I don't care what nobody says, that was a good collection. So anyway, I got this one because there's a couple more mats that I kind of want to play with. I just really want to use this. 
It's, but because I didn't really know exactly what I wanted to do with the look today, I figured I'd throw a couple palettes at you and we just see what sticks. But I think I'm gonna go into the Star Wars palette because this, is this the Star Wars palette? Anyway, it's called Golden Knot. Could be wrong, this may not be a part of Star Wars collection, but I feel like it's, look at that vibe. Yeah, well, this pink shade right here, this one. Pats, shadows, almost kind of perform. Whoa. Pat shadows are so freaking pigmented that sometimes I forget how much I don't have to dig and force my brush into the product. That can sometimes be a learning curve, but have no fear. If you are lighter or like medium makeup collection, you just don't have to really dig as much. But it's honestly really refreshing, girl. Being a chocolate girl, have you ever had to dig some of the surface of the shadow out just to get it to show up on your just to get it to show up on your complexion? You know, you turn it into a loose pigment, you start becoming a scientist. Yeah, I've done that before. Sometimes I just want products to work. And yeah, Pat is a little premium, but I know it's going to work. And I know that this woman is so freaking passionate about everything she creates and designs that like, I ain't gonna be getting no BS. So anyway, that rose color blending all into my crease. And like I said, girl, we're gonna be giving you basic BTs tonight. I don't wanna hear nobody dragging me, girl, because I'm only going to Beauty and Essence. By the way, if you've never been to Beauty and Essence in LA, that's like one of my favorite restaurants. And I don't really have a lot of favorite restaurants. I don't really feel like the food in LA is really that much to rave about, except the Mexican food. You can find me in the comments on that. Tex-Mex, you have 24 hours to respond. Okay, just kidding, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I'm just, I am very much so the kind of girl, like I just wanna use two eyeshadows. <laughs> A nightmare. Literally a nightmare. I just want to use two shadows because I've been trying to give myself like that model look where you can literally just see a crease color and a lid color and that's it. I try to aim for that look all the time and then you guys say that I'm basic. But like, what if I am though? Is it a crime to be basic? I'm going to use a little bit of her from this palette. She's a little fleshy and applying that around the edges of that rose matte color we just used. I'm going to use that to kind of buff it out, soften out this color. So far this is looking really pretty. Simple, pretty. It's going exactly in the direction that I want it to. And that's all that matters. Now with a less diffusing brush, I'm gonna use the same color and I want to deepen in the higher corner of my eye. I don't know why I didn't put two of them together early, but I would describe this as a plum. It's like a plum. Kind of sad, I kind of neglected halo eyes. Like I don't know what they've done. It's kind of like a breakup at this point, but I never even do it anymore. And just because I want to be on the safe side, I'm gonna put a little bit of powder underneath just to swoop up for any fallout we might get. I'm trying to decide if I want to use the pinks from the palette, but I know I'm gonna get dragged for another pink look. I love a challenge. All right, so I'm gonna use pink. <laughs> this is sparkly and she shimmery, shimmers McGimmers. Though. That's not at all what I thought it was gonna look like, but you know what? It's okay. I'm just gonna stamp this on and like just look at the material. See, I'm not wetting my brush. I mean, I still could. Wetting your brush doesn't just intensify the, the color, but it also changes the texture. So if you want it to look more foily, you can do that. But with patch shadows, there's no need. And her mattes are very unclockable. Some of you guys think shimmers are good from all brands, and that's relatively easy to make in shadows anyway. Shimmers are like so easy. Like everybody can make shimmers, but the mattes is what I'm looking to you for. That's what I'm looking for. Hey. Hi, pumpkin. Okay, for 845 though? Oh my days. Okay, bye. He clacked me because we're gonna be late. No, we're gonna be late. Damn. Okay, so this yellow is giving me golden sunset girl. And I know I showed y'all three palettes, but I'm really trying to give you your money's worth and just use one so that you can really save that one. And I saw this look on a dude Akesh on what show was this? It was the Valentino show at Paris Fashion Week in January. And like, first of all, a dude just always looks insane. That woman's face is just iconic. Can we get insurance on a Dunnikesh's face? Because it's just ridiculous how strikingly beautiful she is. But anyway, I was kind of inspired by that color story. It was like this pink. I didn't even realize that she used this palette until I put that pink on and I was like, oh, that's the palette that they use. Anyway, I'm taking this yellow. I am applying it from inner to like the middle center of my lid. Now if I do this with my head tilted back, I can kind of she a cut crease kind of. I know it looks really stupid on camera, but don't mind me. Now I'm gonna go back to our crease color and start to haze that around our two colors, blend it in a little bit more. I'm gonna take that matte pink that we used in our crease earlier, and I'm gonna blend her along my bottom lash line, smoke her out. 
I've never told y'all how much I hate putting shadow down here. I just feel like it looks so stupid on me. Even though this look is a lot louder than I anticipated, I'm kind of getting like carnival vibes from this. It's really pretty. I wonder if Pat could give us a lash. What that would even look Would she? Would she ever give us a lash? Pat, you can tell me. I'm gonna dust off the setting powder underneath the eye and then throw on a quick cute lash, a flirty nighttime lash. Okay, my lash glue is drying, so I'm gonna show you a quick way of how I put on my wigs when I know I'm only gonna be wearing it for like an hour anyway. I take my gotta be glue, I just cover basically the area around my eyebrows. Cause I already know I'm not gonna be wearing it up in no bun, girl. What does this look like, gymnastics? Yeah, I just put a little bit of that gotta be gel. And I'm not inventing the wheel. Somebody said they wanted me to show the wig application in my video, so here I am. But I'm not gonna fully, fully install it because like I said, I'm not gonna be photographed. I'm not gonna be, you know, taking photos or anything. Well, I'll fix that with video. But it's just gonna be a quick dinner slay. This is the gotta be free spray, the one that everyone uses. And then I kind of like flat it out with my finger after I've sprayed that light layer. I'm gonna let that dry while my lash glue dries. I'm a multitasker and I'm also late. Oh my goodness, I'm so embarrassed. Once that dries down and starts looking tacky, then I'm gonna throw the wig on. Using Black Coffee, this is a dark brown eye pencil from Pat. She actually makes my favorite dark brown pencil. It's not chalky, it actually shows up on my complexion and looks brown. It doesn't look too harsh, but it's dark enough to be, you know, like a nice cocoa coffee shade. I'm gonna take that color and line my top lash line and also my water line because I do like to create a little pencil line when I'm wearing a lash. Just blends, it blends that band a little bit more seamlessly and also it just adds a little pop to the eyes. I'm going to smoke that out. Smoke show, smoke show. Smoke that out a little bit so it's more smudgy, less harsh. Then we're gonna line the waterline. I have so not been a dark liner in the waterline kind of girl lately, but going out at night, I am now. Can also just say, like I know you guys love my videos and have noticed a noticeable decrease in uploads lately. Um, I just wanna be super candid. Okay, maybe I should put the line on first. <laughs> There we go, okay. I just wanna be super candid and share that like, I have, you know, some things that are in the works outside of YouTube that do limit a lot of the time that I can upload and run this whole production in the manner that I normally like to. I normally like to give you guys two to three uploads a week if time permits, but unfortunately the obligations that I have outside of YouTube that will ultimately benefit you guys, I must say, which kitchen is the of the stir fry. I've been working, girl, and a lot of that kind of, you know, limits some of the time that I have to commit to YouTube, but I promise I'm actively doing things, and I just wanted to say that. I really appreciate you guys still supporting my uploads because running this thing full time is not as easy as people think it is. It's just not. Curating content is like half the battle of figuring out what I'm gonna upload and then making it quality. Like, I think a lot of people don't realize like how that's not easy, and you know, I will hopefully be dropping some gems and some heat this year. But in the meantime, if I'm not uploading, it's because like commitments outside of the gram and I don't need to back me. I have tied up some of my time and that's all I'm gonna say. But these are good things though, just saying. Take a little bit of extra spray right where I parted, just to tack it down a little bit more. And then I also kind of push that in with the comb. So I pull my hair back, tied it up just so that I can lay into that gel spray concoction a little bit longer. And I'm gonna warm up the cheeks with some blush. This is some cover effects. Ah! I forgot this is the one that's broken. Oh, snap, like that did not happen. Oh, actually, this plan, I forgot the bronze. Let me go ahead and do a bronze real quick. And Pat's powder brush that came out with her last launch, really beautiful for the face. And by the way, this face brush, it's got like the perfect surface area for large metropolitan forehead areas. <laughs> this is Pat's fetishized mascara. I'm going to put that on. You thought I forgot, didn't you? No, I didn't. My lashes should be completely dry now, so I'm going to clump up. Never forget about my mole. I'm bronzing the center face. Just below where my brows start and like right in the middle of my eyes. A little special step to really tie in a look and make it extra box. Now another part of Pat's new system are her pressed powders. Now the reason why I chose to do this a little bit later in the tutorial because I actually prefer to use these as like a finisher, like a duster, a blur veil, if you will. There's three shades. I have both deep and I have medium. There's also a light, which is more like a white, but I'm not really a big fan of like super white powder. So I like kind of fooling with medium and deep. It's transparent and I feel like it just really adds a nice blur 
to the skin. Obviously, there's a reoccurring theme here. Everything in this collection is blurring. It's also brightening and weightless. Oh, the powder looks like this, I should show you. They're really cute. They're like really cute, small, compact little sizes. And I feel like these are perfect for travel. This was the shade Deep that I just used. Sometimes I use medium. Medium is a little bit on the pink side, but I like, I like using them both. Finally, I think I'm gonna finish. Oh no, nope, sorry. Still gotta apply my blush. Arm up the skin. And sometimes if I do this, don't be talking about my lace. I don't even wanna hear it. I do this with my bronzer brush. It kind of makes it look a bit more natural and not stark on the skin. Oh, that is the perfect color for this look. And also warm up the remainder of my face just a tad. I'm gonna use the Pat McGrath Bronze Skin Fetish Highlighter Bomb Duo. These don't really get talked about a lot. I feel like the girls are scared of cream highlighters, girl. Don't be, why? Embrace them. These are, the shade that I'm gonna be using is bronze. And what I like to do is like warm it up on the back of my hand. And then I'll take a brush and apply that residue on to my cheeks. And as you can see, that just adds the most beautiful yellow glow to the skin. And I like to go all the way into the brow, the temples, the cheekbone, just above the brows. This also comes with like a clear balm on the other side, but I feel like it's kind of better when you're doing like a no makeup makeup look. I clearly have a lot of makeup, so I'm not going that route today. This is just basically a clear balm that like amplifies whatever you put over it or makes it more shiny and kind of shears it out in a way. So really just depends on your vibe. I'm gonna line my dry lips to the color of mine because I need something a little bit softer. I want something a little soft. To finalize this look, I'm gonna take one of Pat's lipstick in the shade Attitude and I'm going a little bit out of the box. I tried something that is more like a rosy brown. What do they call that, like a rosewood? This is kind of brown. It's kind of a pinky brown. How did I use this before? Why do I feel like I've actually used this before? Ooh, it's making my brown eyes pop though. And then I'm gonna finish off the look with one of my favorite products in general, not just from Pat McGrath Labs, her lip glosses. Now, because this color is so rich on my complexion, I chose an extra light color that I normally would not use, but because this color is so rich on me, I wanted to kind of lighten and soften it up. This is faux real, and it's kind of milky between the smell, the finish, the colors, the way that they just feel pillowy soft on the lips. Pat makes my favorite glosses, period. Period. I would love to see more peaches though, Pat. She has a lot of pinks. I feel like we're moving past the era of new pink, you know what I mean? Like, I want to see some peaches, girl. Give me some browns. Give me some little orange in it. My last and final step in this video, and I made it a point to include this because Pat does not carry a setting spray. And I would live if she did, even if it wasn't a setting spray. Like, I wanna see Pat give us like a finishing mist, okay? Something that we can also get in travel size, something that has skincare benefits and moves more like skincare than it does a makeup finishing product. I just wanna throw that out. This is from Morphe. We posted about this a dozen times. But anyway, the point was, I wanna see Pat give us one. So that, my babies, is the final look. And it's gonna be real basic. See, it's thin, it's thin, it's thin. I gotta go. Thank you again for Pat for not only constantly supporting me as an influencer, as a fellow black woman, but also to the company for sponsoring today's video. I adore you guys so much. Congratulations on another banger. And when I tell y'all this is really a banger, don't try it in a year and then be like, I'm just gonna listen to Auntie Jackie. No, you should have listened to me when I told you to. If you are considering getting that concealer, I would highly recommend it. It is really such a beautiful finish. I really think that the everyday girl is going to love it. It's great for daytime, it's great for nighttime, buildable, shearable, all of the above. Thank you guys for hanging out on today's video. If you wanna see more, you can just click here. It'll take you five seconds. I'm gonna fail you in one way. Who else are you subscribe to? It don't even matter, just watch another video. Okay, just kidding, I take that back. It does matter. But you really should watch another video because we know you got the day off anyway. So where else you gonna go?